My name is Eckhart Proy, Music Director of the Cincinnati Chamber Orchestra and the Symphony Orchestras in Long Beach, California and Portland, Maine. I am at home here in Spokane in isolation like everyone else and I thought why don't we check in with the guest artists that have either performed with us in the past or will in the future and see what they are up to these days. So uh, Julian, thank you so much for joining me today um, and taking time out of your busy quarantine schedule. Um, um, so uh, you played with the Cincinnati Chamber Orchestra last summer, a very, very beautiful Mozart clarinet concerto. Um, but times have changed now. Um, where are you now and what is the situation for you now? So I'm at home in the United Kingdom at the moment. It's probably the longest time I've ever been at home, ever. Um, and it, it's, it's kind of surreal in some ways. I mean, I was in, in the USA and then I managed to, by coincidence, I left the day before all the travel bans came into place. So I just got home in the, in the kind of nick of time, so to speak. And um, it was, yeah, it, it's been very interesting and very surreal to see how it's all panned out and changed. Um, you know, much like uh, many other countries, we, we're not supposed to go out unless you have to and you know, all necessary travel, no work. But the knock-on effects, at least on our, uh, in our industry, is everything has been cancelled. Um, every single concert I have, even now, um, all the way through into the fall, the autumn time. Um, so, yeah, just the diary is completely empty. And it's a bit of a... It's a bit of a concerning situation, of course, because you wonder what the knock-on um, impact is going to be. You know, a lot of these these smaller but fantastic music festivals, you know, they, they rely on on the concerts, the, the audience to be there. So I, I don't think it's just this year. I think we're going to see the effects of this for, for at least a couple of years. And maybe the world will be a, a, a slightly different place when, when all of this ends. But we we just have to try and make the best of it that we possibly can and and get used to the time of adjustment now you with no uh imminent concerts on the horizon do you practice less or do you practice more <laughs> it's kind of the there's a there's a freedom in your practice in some ways that you now not not before it, it could sound it's not that you have to you feel oh, i have to practice this but now you say to, you can say to yourself, "What do I feel like doing? Um, what do I want to focus on?" And it's a very different kind of angle to come at practice. In some ways, I think it's a good time, you know, looking at the positives to go back to the basics. You know, once in a while to to go back and realize all of those fundamental things and kind of reacquaint yourself with them. So, so when you say go back to the basics, how basic are we talking about? Very, we're, you know, we're talking long tones, basic scales, legato exercises. Um, yeah, I became reacquainted. I mean, I, I did some of that stuff in daily practice anyway, but there's a, it's a, a different kind of feeling because when you have a vast amount of pieces to learn, um, that's always your focus. Whereas now you can take the time for the technical stuff. Do you think that um, when you get back on stage, like let's say a month, two months, three months, four months from now, you'll be more nervous than usual. Is this going to be like a totally new experience or you're like, oh, finally I'm back and you just play? I think it'll be more of the, more of the second one, I think for me. Um, I'm really looking forward to it. I've, I've kind of been one of these, I don't know, I wouldn't say odd people, but um, I don't have never really got nervous before performance. Um, of course, there's adrenaline always for everybody. And for some people, it, it kind of channels into the, maybe the negative side of things, the nerves, you know, all of these people are there looking at me. What if this happens? What if, you know, I make a mistake, play a wrong note, um, you know, for violinists, what if my string breaks, you know, any of those, uh, those sort of things. Whereas I've never really had those thoughts in my mind. Um, before a concert, I, I just think, right, let's go. I want to go and have fun. Um, and in some ways, that's where I feel most comfortable. Yeah, when I get back, I think it's going to be 
it'd be like going home. Like, oh, okay, here we are, finally. Yeah. So, so what does a normal day in isolation look like for you? You sleep in? Well, s some days, some days. <laughs> Depends. I try and try and take it easy on the weekend. I, I had about a week or so of not really, maybe slightly longer than a week, of not really following any kind of schedule. And that really, it kind of gets to you after a bit. So now I'm really trying to, or have been really trying to put an actual schedule in place and um, not necessarily work hours because it, it varies. You know, you get emails from around the world at all times of the day. Um, but yeah, we'll wake up and, you know, tend to the emails and the admin side of things. Um, I try and get out um, every day. I try and get outside. Um, started running again. I was trying to do the 5k three times a week. So wow. yeah, trying to, trying to do some of that. And then on to the, you know, the practice side of things and creating a lot of, a lot of content uh, as well. But yeah, there's, there's always, there's always a lot to do. Um, I think in some ways, I wouldn't say there's more to do now, but in some ways there is because you're having to create things from nothing yeah. and come up with completely new ideas. Um, yeah, the other side I've, I've kind of ended up getting into is baking. I know a lot of people have baking and cooking, um, which I, I love. So yeah, it's, it's been, it, there are some, some nice things about being um, on. And yeah, on the baking side, I mean, it's good and it's bad. It's, it's good because you hopefully make really tasty, delicious things. But then the bad side is you eat all of those. So therefore you have to go running even more. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's just trying, try some different things. Why not? Yeah. yeah. So, um, in general, what do you miss most these days? What do you really miss? Um, I think, well, the, the traveling and seeing, seeing the world, of course. I mean, you're, that's, that's what you're, you're, you're bound to miss. But I, I was talking to some friends recently and they said that they crave hearing music acoustically live in front of them and because now we're getting a lot of our our content uh, digitally i think there is a craving for that to i want to be able to make music with someone else in the same room uh, rather than over the internet so i think that's the biggest the biggest thing yeah you can still be creative but it's very very different and people are still trying to figure out what that is and how how it should be um but yeah the live the live music with other people that's yeah that's what i miss so i know you, you have many musical interests uh what kind of music are you listening to these days and i assume it's not mozart <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why just <laughs> i mean if i tend to if i get in the car for example not that it happens very often just go to the supermarket uh, or if i'm at home i tend to listen to a lot of the i don't know what you could call it kind of cross between uh, the funk, soul, R and B, you know, Tower of Power, uh, Earth, Wind and Fire, um, all of that era of music is is what I tend to listen to the most. Um, but yeah, my uh, my Spotify is quite quite varied, and you know, I like also trying to discover new things. You know, trying to find find things that I might want to play, or um, you yeah, know, trying to come up with some new projects at the moment. So doing a lot of discovery, but. Yeah, it's a variety of everything from Rackman and off all the way through to, you know, electronic music and yeah, there's right. a lot. Um, you you just mentioned a recording project. Um, do you have any any new releases coming out these days? Well, so um, before all of this, in back in January, um, I recorded two albums with my jazz band. Um, so we had two albums in three days, which was wow. It was uh, intense. It was intense. Um, yeah, every day from about 10 till 6, we recorded solidly. Um, so we managed to get those in. And I think one of them is scheduled to be released um, this summer. Um, and last, at the end of last year, I recorded um, Brahms clarinet sonatas and some Brahms songs. So that's also scheduled for release. But, you know, like everything, everything's kind of malleable and movable at the moment. So you know what things that were scheduled to be released now are being delayed um so there's there's other ways you can do it we're looking at a lot of um some digital only projects 
um, that I'm going to be recording here in this very room, probably um, some kind of solo stuff. Having, for example, the piano player, this fantastic French uh, piano player I met in Indiana called Julien uh, Contin. We were going to do the Rachmaninoff together. He's he lives in Berlin, and so there's been a few pieces that he's recorded his part and sent it to me. I record my clarinet part here, and then I put the two together. And so we're starting to work on some of that, maybe for some electronic release um, down that road a little bit. So it's kind of fun in some ways. You know, there's a lot of creating new ideas and a new recording projects. But yeah, there's. I was due to be recording another, another. I think this, this year in total was going to be four or five albums. So this was going to be a big recording year. Um, so yeah, things have changed slightly, but there's 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 a couple done, ready to ready to go almost. I remember, I remember you played summertime with us in Cincinnati, yeah. and just from the very first note you really got the got the feel for it and the sound is that do you kind of flip a switch or is it more like that you know mozart and gershwin inform each other or is this really two different different worlds i never had a, a time when i consciously thought about it if that makes sense i didn't think right do i separate it or keep it together i just kind of started playing um and there have been times i i did a, a particular concert last year um with uh, an orchestra in the uk we did weber concerto and in the same hall after that concert they have a late night series so me and the band then did an hour's playing and i have done kind of back-to-back -back classical and jazz and some people think hey, how do you how do you do it how is it possible it's so different but to me it's all music and i don't change anything in my my setup the way i play the instrument um i still think in the same ways um I can't remember who it was, but someone said to me that jazz and classical are essentially the same thing. The only difference is that in classical, you have pre-prescribed notes to play. What is kind of the funniest thing that has happened to you in quarantine? If yeah, anything, quarantine. a funny thing, yeah. Oh, a funny thing in quarantine. I don't know, no, nothing particularly funny has happened to me. I've been here in my own house stuck so yeah nothing particularly funny i thought you were going to say what happened funny in in, co in a concert in a concert uh, I, cannot, well, okay. I can't answer that one <laughs> um so most of the time in concerts i use I, I play from memory but there are times when i use an ipad um if i use music i always use an ipad and it was one particular concert i was doing with the band in florida and um the first row is quite close to the, the front of the stage. And I noticed this older gentleman um, taking a photo. I thought, okay, that's, that's fine, you know, from, from there. But then as I was playing, um, I know, had the little notification on my iPad that says, you know, whoever wants to airdrop you a photograph. And for some reason, the guy in the front row had decided to send the photograph he'd taken to my ipad on stage whilst i was playing um which took me by surprise by a little bit and i looked at the preview very quickly and could see us but from his perspective um so i pressed decline and his face was quite confused i don't think he actually meant to send me the picture um but i should have accepted it so i could show everyone hey look this is what happened um but yeah it was at a time when some of the other members in the band saw and they they had a, a good laugh at my at my expense on that one but yeah. it didn't distract us at all but yeah that's probably the weirdest thing that's happened in the concert anyway yeah. um, since you were just talking about um people taking pictures in concerts yeah how do you did you would you react to someone front row or not taking a video I mean, there's, there, there's recent events that prompt this question, of course. It's one of those, one of those things, and, and a lot of people do it. I've been to concerts now where, um, not, not classical concerts, but more, you know, on the other, other side of things, popular music, and you look at the, the crowd and the vast majority have their phone up and they're looking at that through their phone. 
and yes, whilst it's nice and you know, even myself, I take a, a short video or a picture, you're not really living it and experiencing it. And I think there's something quite nice to just being in the moment and having a memory um, rather than having to document everything in front of you. But it's kind of the world we live in. Um, but it does make you think maybe, maybe we need to enjoy more of what's happening in the moment rather than, you know, just wanting to document it and living it through a, through a screen. Um, but then again, people might have different views on that. What would I do if I had a million dollars? Um, right now I would probably, uh, buy a recording studio. <laughs> if that would, if a million dollars, I mean, get me some, I don't know how much they, they are, but right now I'd probably do that. Um, and it, it not nothing particularly frivolous, really. I'd, I'd probably buy move my, my move house and then oh, I'd enjoy it. I'd, I'll enjoy some of it. I'll probably, you know, buy another car, something like that. Why not? I'll allow myself a little bit of money just to spend and enjoy, but then I'll try and be sensible with the rest. I don't know how you feel about these early recordings that are out there. Well, it, it, it's an interesting discussion in general because, you know, in this age, the, everything is there forever. You know, you have CDs, you have recordings, and, and people can hear things that you recorded 10, 15, however many years ago. Um, and when I was making CDs, I always wanted it to almost be perfect in some ways i wanted to take care to make it perfect but the way i see a recording is it it's sort of a snapshot of how you played at that time
Thank you, Julian, for making so much time. That's uh, all right. Anytime. It was a pleasure talking to you and seeing you again. And uh, yeah. looking forward to our next time. Me too. Me too. I had a lot of fun. A lot of fun last year. It was a real pleasure. So hopefully we can do it again soon. Thank you.